uh, <laughs> let me let me show you here real quick what Daryl's dealing with. Sent me a uh, little video here. You guys see the video here? See this Facebook video? Check this out here. Anyway, he's got a bad storm that hit him. <laughs> we caught uh, caught Jackie in the uh, video there. Anyway, he's got a bad storm that hit him there and knocked out some power, knocked out his internet, so he wasn't able to hop on here with you. So um, I'm going to hop on here with you real quick. We're not going to be too, too long tonight, but wanted to cover a few things. So Daryl was sorry he missed you, but he's dealing with that crazy storm there. So... Um, Somebody says, I thought you lived right by him. Same storm not hitting you. Well, Doug, he, Daryl is up in Boyd, Texas, which is just kind of north northwest of Fort Worth, Texas. And I'm down near San Antonio, Texas. So we're actually about four and a half hours apart. So not getting any of that just yet, but we're supposed to get some weather down here um, tomorrow and uh, the next day. So we've got a, you know, we've got a, good little gap there between us but it's heading down this way so yep it looks like some bad storms hitting the dallas fort worth area there and um but welcome to the webinar tonight let's get our disclosures knocked out here as always you know trade involves risk make sure you know what you're doing before you do it but um definitely keep uh, daryl and family and any of our uh, guys there in the dallas fort worth area and your thoughts and prayers but uh also, we've had quite a few, you know, we've had several members that were really affected this last week uh, by the hurricane and by the weather there. Um, you know, I know Gary there in Louisiana, he had a uh, really bad time of it. I've talked to him. I've seen some of the pictures. It hit him pretty hard. You know, luckily he uh, got out of there. He was going to stick it out, but uh, those winds got to about 75 miles an hour, and then they were going to be coming in at 150 miles an hour, and uh, he... He and Angie got out of there, uh, evacuated, but got back and a uh, lot of damage to the house and the roof pretty much gone. You know, we've had several other members that hit. Some weather got thrown towards uh, Black, the guy that you guys all know and love and talk to in the help desk. He had uh, some damage to his house and uh, tree fall. And so we definitely keep our, um, and several others, definitely keeping our Apex uh, family and our thoughts and prayers there uh, as they're affected, affected by all that. So luckily so far you know everyone is safe and you know it's it's so sad to see these homes damaged and roofs damaged and all that uh those things can be replaced and uh, our people and our family cannot so i'm very glad that uh, everybody was safe and uh, those have you know evacuated when they did so we're we're glad to have them here with us but keep them in your thoughts and prayers for all they're having to go through here i know gary was telling me in some parts of um Louisiana out there, they some people won't have power or internet again for four to six weeks. You know, can you imagine that? It's just craziness. So on top of everything else we're dealing with in this uh, crazy year of 2020, right? So keep those guys in your thoughts and prayers. Uh, I want to say congrats. Several of you uh, this week, just the last couple of days even, I've seen uh, y'all posting that you got uh, your Lilu account funded. So congratulations on that on those that have gotten funded. Uh, if any of you missed last week's webinar, uh, I have to really hand it to Daryl. He was very prepared for last week's webinar to really dig in with you guys, um, you know, about some of the struggles that we've all dealt with, with Lilu, and, you know, the mental and psychological, you know, warfare really that it is to stay focused and stay on track, stay disciplined, follow our rules and and get to where we need to be with Lilu, right? And if you guys missed that or if you're still struggling with that, go back and watch the recording from last week's webinar. It is a must watch for everyone. He really goes through it, shares some of his own frustrations, some of his own issues that he's dealt with. You know, him and I have both tried to jump in there and really learn and understand, you know, the, the psychological aspect of what you guys deal with while you're trying to qualify for Lilu. You know, and then you've got this, well, 10 day minimum that you deal with and that messes with your head because you want to try to do it in 10 days. You know, you don't have to, that's just a minimum. 
and then you want to try to get it done before your next billing and then you see oh, I can do all these contracts so I want to do all those contracts right and there's so many psychological things that you deal with and go back and watch next uh, last week's webinar if you missed it because there's some really really good stuff in there that'll help you kind of really refocus and you know follow those rules and really make sure you're keeping an eye on you know that trailing threshold that can get you and I, I know you'll go some people go through a reset and you know oh, I can do it again and do a reset and you know how many how much have you spent on resets compared to just doing it slow and you know just walk through it properly a little bit of time yes Pat that was last Tuesday's webinar yes okay check that out Daryl has some really great information in there about Lilu I know it helped a lot of people okay and a lot of people said yes that's me I struggle with the same thing that was very helpful so definitely check that out um, this upcoming week Monday is a trading holiday we've got Labor Day this coming weekend so we do have a three-day weekend uh, how can that affect Friday trading okay uh, for most of you that have been around and the you know or veteran traders you know that the Friday right before a three-day weekend um, can at times be a little nutty okay um, it can it can be a little crazy in the morning and go nuts and then sometimes it can still be nuts in the afternoon or hey, sometimes the big boys just take off it's a three-day weekend they might just head out at lunch and you know not be around in the afternoon you kind of never know what to expect Fridays can be kind of crazy days anyway but Friday right before three-day weekend can be a little nuts okay and I believe it's also yes Doug and I believe it's also NFP okay so expect that to be a pretty volatile trading day um, it might be a day that you really want to be careful you really want to maybe focus on micros if you're gonna be trading or you know you might not want to be trading a whole lot there you might want to really keep an eye on your stops keep an eye on everything okay so you've got not only enough P but you've got three-day weekend and non-farm payroll it's a big news announcement okay so really keep an eye out for Friday and be aware because if you don't think about those things you weren't aware of you know how the three-day weekends affected or NFP you might step in and go what the heck is going on okay so definitely keep an eye on your trading there be aware watch your stops you might want to focus more on micros especially if NQ is going crazy you could look at switching over to ES or even ES micros but just a heads up warning it could be a little bit of a crazy day so be aware be cautious maybe check out some micros okay so I know that I know I remember a couple times when I was new with trading and got up and like what the heck it just happened like I had no idea right and everyone's in the room like well you should have known better why I didn't know no one told me I didn't understand at the time you know it's very easy to forget those things because our <laughs> the other side of our brain says oh man money's a trading holiday I'm gonna lose a day of trading so I want to do what I want to trade extra on Friday right and that's literally the opposite of what you should do you know what I mean like yeah or like David says oh you want to double down I want to go crazy on Friday and that's literally the opposite of what you should do there okay um, Roddy that could affect some early morning trading before the open yep yep um, you just never know sometimes that can make it more volatile sometimes things can just be kind of smoothed out waiting on big announcements like eh, nobody's sure what's gonna happen so they're gonna take it easy but it's gonna be a little bit of an odd one there because not only do we have the big announcement we also got the three-day weekend what big boys are there or not so just be very very aware okay so um, also long weekend right you got a three-day weekend okay take some time with your family get out all right yeah I'm gonna sit here and tell you hey watch some webinar reviews check out the mind mastery use the extra time to you know brush up do some back testing and all that and we all know you will right you know we we do that on the weekends anyway as traders much less when we have a three-day weekend but also it's very important to balance some life right take some time out spend some time with your family I know for a lot of you I know for us our kids are finally actually going back to in-person school on you know Tuesday the 8th 
Um, so it's kind of our last weekend as a family to get out and do something before school starts again. More like throw a great party because we're very happy they're going back. They need it. <laughs> we need it. And uh, so definitely looking forward to that. But uh, take advantage. Of, yeah, no kidding. Big time party. Um, but take advantage of the long weekend. Do some back testing. Do some studying. But spend some time for yourself there too. Um, this weekend is, as you know, Labor Day. Daryl mentioned we're going to be doing some Labor Day specials. And just to give you a few updates here, you're probably very aware um, Daryl and the team and Lori and Gabe and Greg and Ben and all of the testers, the beta testers have been working night and day, doing an amazing job, um, you know, working with, you know, Ninja Trader 8, trying to get that fully out for you, uh, finishing up some final touches with Markers Plus, just kind of all the fine tuning pieces there. But here in the near future, we'll be making the big switch over to Ninja Trader 8. You're going to love it. Don't, it's not a scary thing. Don't be scared about it. It's 90%, you know, the same functionality. It's not going to be some big learning curve for you. Daryl's making step-by-step -step short videos. It's going to be an easy transition. Everything is looking great. There's a ton of fantastic, you know, upgrades and things that come with 8. Um, but there's about to be a big switch over to Ninja Trader 8, you know, which also is going to put a lot of work on me and Daryl as well. Um, you know, we're going to do a pretty big Apex site overhaul, change up a lot of things, change, you know, a lot of some of the menus, some of the flow. We're going to have to completely redo just about all of our training courses and videos, right? I mean, think about it. When you first started, we showed you how to download Ninja, how to set up Ninja, how to do this, how to do that. You know, we've got to completely redo that. Um, in the middle of that, or along with that, we're going to completely be redoing all of the training for the sniper program, uh, clarifying the rules, clarifying how new members start, what to do first, what to do second. You know, those of you that have been around, sniper has kind of developed, right? You know, we released Sniper and here was the training and well, we redid a few of the trainings and then in some webinars, we updated some things and as you know, as we learn and grow and add on new stuff and like you've seen, oh, hey, wow, guess what guys here, we've got a new detector for you, right? This new detector detects this trade, this new thing we've added on a lot, you know what I mean? And sometimes you got to really keep up with that. You went through training, and then you went through some advanced training, and you're in the room, you're doing some webinars. We've added so much in. So we're going to literally have to go back and redo it all and put it all into a step-by-step -step training. Okay. Um, Leonard asked, do you suggest we switch to NT8 now to become more familiar with it? No, you can't switch right now, Leonard, because we haven't released the Apex Toolkit into NinjaTrader 8 yet publicly. Okay, the beta and pre-beta team are still testing some of the final things. We're fine-tuning some of the final pieces to release it all. And then we've got to get all the training out there. So there's going to be a lot of stuff coming up here that uh, in the back end of a lot of work for us. But we're going to, you know, be releasing NT8, doing a whole new site overhaul, new courses and training. Um, Ninja Trader 8 doesn't have the group trading feature the way that Ninja Trader 7 does. You know what I'm talking about? You've seen Daryl trades in one account. It duplicates in 10 others, you know. Um, so we've got a new uh, plug-in feature for that that we're finalizing as well so that you guys can have multiple Lilu accounts and trade multiple accounts at once. We're, you know, transitioning over the Markers Plus version from 7 to 8 uh, and finalizing those templates and those trainings and trying to get everything as streamlined as possible to where, you know, it works the same way you're already familiar with it working, but all the new features and the Ninja Trader 8, you know, aspect of it all. So a lot of work, a lot of things we're doing, a lot of changes you're going to see in Apex, you know, possible some new packages. There might be some price increases that are coming moving forward for new members. If you're already in, you're in, you're grandfathered in, okay? But with all of these changes and new packages and new site, we might have some new package and price increases moving forward. Um, now, if you're in now, you're already grandfathered into whatever package you're on. 
but let's say that hey I'm a monthly member now but I've been thinking about doing an annual or thinking about doing a lifetime or upgrading to a package well some of those packages the way they are now might have a price increase coming soon when everything is overhauled and switched over okay so take advantage of it now and get grandfathered in um, on Thursday I will post some of the Labor Day specials and I'll get them emailed out I'll get them posted. you're not gonna miss them they're gonna be everywhere okay I'll get them posted out to everybody this coming Thursday and they'll be on the website and on the sign up page and they'll be taken down Tuesday night at midnight September the 8th and there's gonna be some different packages most of them this will be the last time we ever offer them uh, they'll never be offered again or never be offered again at some of these prices okay so you know there's gonna be you know some of the platinum and titanium all that but there's gonna be some special annuals some special four-month plans and this is kind of the last time we're gonna offer them at these prices pop them out there take them down Tuesday night and then when everything's rolled over and overhauled and new programs over to Ninja Trader 8, we'll have some different packages at that time for some of those. So make sure to take advantage. You can get grad-fathered in at the lower prices while they're still there. Depending on what membership you currently have now, that'll depend on what upgrades you see. We're not going to just overload everything for you. Where do you find this? Well, again, I'm going to send a bunch of stuff out. You're not going to miss it. But if you're on the Apex website, just go ahead and log in. And right up here under account menu links, you can go to sign up for any plan or product. That's where you'll be able to see all of the specials that are available for the Labor Day weekend promo. Okay, so keep that in mind Thursday when you see some of that stuff being sent out. That's where you can go if you want to take a look at those and take advantage of some of those. So we're going to post those on Thursday. Okay, so. Um, so just a few updates there. I wanted to review with you kind of what's going on. Um, beware for Labor Day coming up here. So uh, it was kind of last minute here that I had to take over the webinar because uh, the storm hit Daryl pretty hard. So I don't have I don't have a big webinar training subject for you tonight. But you know after Daryl asked me to cover it, I I grabbed a couple quick screenshots because. There's something that I've seen a lot of over the last couple weeks, but very much so the last several days of trading. And so we're not gonna get crazy deep into a big training here. I, I kinda wanna share this with you and spark your thought more than anything and maybe give you a little bit of homework, okay? You guys haven't heard a whole lot from me about simplicity, okay, because that's Kind of Daryl's thing. Daryl talks about it. Daryl trades it in the room. I personally don't trade a whole lot of simplicity throughout the day. I trade it just at certain times. Uh, I do trade it some. But I've, I've seen a very common thing here that Daryl has addressed, um, especially the last couple of weeks on webinars. He's tried to get you to step out of the box, meaning You've got your simplicity chart. You've got your 30 second chart there. You've got both of the lines. You know the entries. You're taking your entries. You're trailing them. And you're just focused, waiting, waiting for it to come all the way back against you and hit your stop. Right? Okay. Now, you guys all know. <laughs> thanks, Dennis. You guys all know that if it comes all the way back against you and hits that solid line, that can be a pretty big stop, right? Meaning you might be up quite a bit. And by the time it comes all the way back and hits that stop, how much can you lose? You know what I mean? Like how much can it come back? A lot, right? I mean, give me some ideas here. What have, you, what have some of you guys seen? I was up $200 and when it came all the way back down, I was at like <laughs> 10 negative 10 it can happen right that's kind of the pro and con uh yeah perry like 30 points sometimes 30 ticks sometimes like it can be big that's one of the big pros and cons of not just simplicity but any system that trails right you can either be a scalper where you're like okay i'm getting in 
I've got an ATM, it's already set there. When I get 10 ticks, boom, it's taking me out, done, right? And then what happens? Oh man, it went another 20 and you're mad, right? You got 10, you made 10, but you're mad you didn't get 10 more, right? And that messes with your head mentally. Well, then you trade something like Simplicity when you're, tr when you're trailing and you're like, oh, I'm up 100, I'm up 200, I'm up here. Oh, okay, I'm up 300 bucks, sweet. Oh, wait, now, now it's coming back. 280, 250, 200, 181. Oh, man. Right? Like it takes a whole other set of mental strength. And some of you that have been through the Mind Mastery class know that, right? So, you know, it's a struggle both ways. Okay? Rodney says, hey, I thought you were only going for 30 ticks per day. Well, that is what we teach, you know, with the sniper program and with scalping to get 10, 10, 10, and stop at three. You know, but some of you that are trading simplicity are going for these longer, bigger moves. And sometimes you get a great big move, right? And sometimes you don't. And it's a very big mental struggle to trail because you know you're not gonna be able to get those big moves unless you stay in, but you've seen it pull way back against you sometimes. And look, there's no holy grail answer to that, right? There's no way around that. If you're going to try to, to, you know, really go for bigger moves, you're going to have to deal with a lot of those pullbacks. You're going to have to see that, man, I was up $500, but then I got out and I was up like three. Oh, man, I lost 200. No, you made 300. It's a very big struggle. There's no way around that in trading. Okay. But something I want you to think about here, and like I said, this is not a long big training course that I had time to put together because this was last minute but I've seen this the last few days and I've talked to some people about it and I want to share it with all of you and I want you to think about it and I'm going to kind of challenge you to look this over and maybe even take advantage of the three-day holiday weekend to look back but some of you are familiar and some of you use a 30 tick chart okay this is an example here on on NQ and I I would just show you the live chart, but it's actually on my second computer. I have my big charts on my second computer. But what I was saying a minute ago was it's very easy to get so focused on your 30 second chart and your entries and your trail and not look at the other chart. And Daryl has really tried to talk a lot about that on the last couple of webinars, right? Maybe the last three about, hey, still look at your other charts, still look at your sniper charts. Are we going, you know, where, where are our walls? Where's our NQ walls? Where's our flux levels? And about, even though it's simplicity, you still don't wanna trade into those walls. You still don't wanna trade into those levels. You still don't wanna trade into chop, right? And you want some of those open spaces. He, he's really tried to bring that in with you guys, the last, few weeks here on the webinars right and I know for a lot of you it's been a big eye-opener um, but something I haven't really seen a lot of people really take advantage of when they're trading simplicity is going back a little bit older school here and any of you that were in the you know the live uh, last year's live event or even this year's I believe online event we talked a lot about mainly Lori teaches about the 30 tick chart, okay? And the 30 tick chart is super helpful. How many times have y'all been in the room with Lori and Lori says, this market will eventually go down to this level. This market will go to this level and will stop. Hey, be careful. When this market gets to this level, it's gonna hit resistance or whatever, right? Yeah, like every day. You know, and you're like, how does that little witchy woman know that ahead of time? How, what is she seeing, right? And she's very good with that. And if you've lis listened to her training or if you listened to the, the online events, you know, from the last two years, she really digs in and teaches about the 30 tick chart. And it's literally hours of training. I couldn't possibly cover it all with you tonight. Um, go back and watch those if you're not you don't have access to those, sign up for those and get them. They are worth it. But I really want you guys to start paying a little more attention to the 30 tick chart. 
because I've seen multiple trades over the last several days in the last couple weeks of people saying, oh, I was in a simplicity trade and it pulled way back against me. And I'm like, why weren't you out? You should have been out, like back up here. Oh, well, you know, I was just trailing my stop. It didn't get me out yet. I'm like, okay, that is correct. You, f you did follow the rules of simplicity. You didn't do it wrong. You did it right. You followed the rules of simplicity. You moved your stop. You trailed your stop. You were following the rules, okay? But you also got to step outside of the box. It's not just about the ABCs. It's also about the one, two, threes, right? And the 30 tick chart is very helpful of when you see these big levels, okay? On the 30 tick, you need to be very aware of those, okay? And you need to watch those and get the hell out, okay? Like I, I've seen several trades where you, people could have saved literally hundreds of dollars, okay? If they had just really paid attention to these. This screenshot here, for example, I took this trade myself yesterday in uh, one of my Lili about accounts and I think I got close to three grand on the trade because I'd done multiple contracts but right here okay you, you kind of can't see it but see this down close bar see that paw print there's also a mini magnet right there okay um, and this was kind of an ICR setup there was some divergence on some other larger charts I'm not trying to get into all that but the point was I took this trade short here for several reasons okay I went short and where do you think my stop was I don't see anything off to the right here all I see is this live right here but on the 30 tick you got to realize this isn't a little 10 tick this is a 30 tick okay when you see some of these big things on the 30 tick you need to be aware of them and get the hell out or tighten up at least okay but but let's look right here so this bar closed down and I'm going short okay you can see all this you see this mini magnet right here already right you can see right here there's a paw print see it you see there's a block order right there right and right here you see there's a cluster you, you see all of that right there. Yeah? I mean, that's pretty clear, right? Now, I know what some of you are saying. Well, John, well, look, I mean, it went down another, like, 30 feet. Look, at, it went further than that. I don't care. <laughs> I mean, I'm just being blunt. I don't care. Because what happened? You're coming down and you're trailing, you're trailing, trailing. By the time it popped up, where did you get out? Or look, right here when it came all the way down to it, my stop, my exit was three ticks above this mini magnet up here. So basically at the close of this bar, I was out. And what happened as soon as it hit it, boom, it pulled back up. 30 ticks. See that? It pulled back against me 30 ticks. That might have hit your stop, right? If you were trailing short, that might have hit your stop right there, wouldn't it? So you would have made 30 ticks less than I did. Does that, does that make sense? Because I know some of you are sitting here going, oh, but look, you could have got a little more and what if it went further? I want to get everything I can get. You probably would have never been down here because you probably would have got stopped up here. Right? Does everybody see that? But you're sitting here going, man, this is a good setup. We're at a big high here. There's some divergence on some other charts. It's kind of an ICR, an institutional controlled reversal type setup that Lori talks about. Maybe we've got this mini meta, whatever, 10 million things. I'm not talking about that. And your mind's going, what? Man, I could ride this thing for hundreds. I don't want to get out. I just want to see what happens. Guys, look at this, though. 
These are 30 tick bars. So each bar that closes down is 15 ticks. So I got 15, 30, 45, 60 out. And my heartbeat was not crazy because I knew where it was going to go. You know what I mean? I knew where to expect it to stop. And that's 60 friggin' ticks. Be happy. Okay? Like, be happy. So do you get my point here? This is not a simplicity chart, but I'm trying to get you guys to understand, like, you're going and going and going. It might have pulled back and got you there. If it didn't and you kept going, it would have pulled back and got you somewhere here. And you really would have wished that you would have just set your stop there and gotten out. Forget what your gut's telling you. Forget what your emotions are telling you. Forget what your greed's telling you. And forget what if. Well, what if this is the big move? Well, what if this one could go hundreds and hundreds and I make some of those trades like I see Daryl Martin make? Stop. Right? Like here to here, that is a crazy wall. 60 ticks, guys. I mean, and that was the only trade I took. Right? And there was no need to take another one. Done. Exactly, Todd. Okay? So, I've seen several of these kind of things recently where you're so focused on that simplicity chart and following it to the T and making sure you're following the rules for entry and getting your stop just right and every bar that closes up and the line closes up you're moving your stop up to the line you're really focused on the rules and that is good you've got to follow rules okay and we teach you follow the rules follow the rules follow the rules but that's just step one you know what I mean you've heard us say not just the one, two, threes, but also the ABCs. Meaning, yes, you need to know rule number one, rule number two, rule number three. But also ABCs of why. Like, step back and look at the chart. What is this chart telling you? Is it going to happen right around here? Boom, big pullback. Do what the chart's telling you to do, too. Okay? Perry just said it perfect. The rules keep you safe. The market reading makes you money. Does that make sense? Step out of the box, step out of the one, two, three rule, and look and say, okay, the rules tell me to leave my stop way back here. But everything right here screams 30 ticks, mini magnet, paw print, block order, literally on a cluster right above the 0.5 dev i'm putting my exit right there and gonna be happy with 60 ticks instead of letting it go back against me and giving back 30 to 60 ticks everybody see that does that make does that make sense just this one screenshot okay quick question Taking that ride back up. What, what, what do I see? Taking this ride back up. When I get back close to this mini magnet and Paul right on top of each other, is my stop way back down here on Simplicity 40 ticks away? I may not be getting out and exiting right there, but I am bumping my stop right, as Lori would say, right on its ass, right up its butt. Like I am protecting that money. Right? Make sense? Then when it's getting up in here into what? These, you know, double blocks right here. And then I... Am I, am I stop way down here? Uh-uh. 
I'm tightening and protecting that. Okay, those aren't blocks, right? Those are ZOIs right there, right? Yeah, I'm protecting it because it's the smart thing to do. Oh, well, aren't I breaking the rules? Because Daryl says you put your stop way down here at the solid line. Daryl also talks to you about being smart of when to bump that up. You're way up. Like, you, you've got a crap ton of money here if you took all this way up here, right? Say so you got in somewhere down here around, you know, 120. This, just saying as an example. You're up here at 150. You're up 30 freaking points. Okay. Is there any reason to give back hundreds of dollars? Hundreds. Yeah, Daryl tells you, tighten your stop at levels. Okay. Yeah, no kidding, right? So, and I'm not trying to get into a exact simplicity training here. And, I, you know, I, I'm not able to pull up a simplicity chart and show it up against this. And again, you're not trading simplicity on a 30 tick. You're still trading on your 30 second. I'm just saying, look at some of these levels and be smart because I've seen people lose so much money. Let's look at a couple other things here. Uh, this was a couple days ago or yesterday. Okay. At midnight on uh, Sunday night, the market came up here. Do you see what it left right up here? Okay. And we'll, we'll talk about some of down here later. But, okay, well, just look at this. What is down here? Settlements right here. Okay. You've got one of your levels here. You've got a paw on top of a, a mini magnet all right in here. And you see it came to the tick. If you're riding this sucker down, <laughs> okay, if you're riding all of this way down here, and I'm not saying you wouldn't have been knocked out, but if you're riding this sucker down, when you're getting in it down into this, I mean, come on, tighten up, right? Tighten up. Just look at a couple things on this chart. Look right in here. We've got a paw and a mini magnet right there, right on this chop at the top of that chop box. The market pops back up to it, boom, bounces off of it. Back to it again, boom, bounces off of it. See that? But what is a big level that you would have seen from midnight on? What is your end zone? What is your playing zone for the day? What is this big thing you see right up here, this mini magnet and block on top of each other? That happened at midnight, right? 11 hours later, where does it come and just chop, 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 and then eventually dropped off? Like. You can clearly see some of these things on the 30 tick chart. Okay. You can see some of them. Um, Chad says to use a certain template. I kind of have my own little template I use here, um, but there's already one made in the toolkit that Lori made. It's Lori's actual template, Chad. And I believe it's called 30 tick. Um, let me see here. What is it called? I think it's 30 tick plane. Yeah, all you gotta do is select in cube, um, select 30 tick bars and find your template um, 30 tick plane and it'll pull right up for you. Okay, I mean, you gotta leave it running so that it starts plotting the order prints. But um, yeah. Lori's is right in there. Is it plain or simple? Marion, it's simple, right? 30 tick simple? Marion would know. So, or plain. I guess it's called plain now. Okay, so do you, do you see that where it kind of, you can really, like on a 10 tick chart, when we're doing these little scalps, we definitely want to look at that 10 tick chart and say, okay, there's a stack of two things or a stack of three things, okay? But when you're trying to trade simplicity, I mean, it's still good to look at that. But on the 30 tick, when you see a big stack of something there, and I see people trading simplicity into those stacks, okay, with a big, huge stop on it still, I'm like, what the hell are you doing? You know what I mean? Why are you going to give up 30, 40 ticks 
when it's plain as day, you see that's your exit. And why are you going to put yourself through the heartbeat? You know, the heart attack. Just get out. Yeah, Nicholas, it is. Uh-huh. Okay. You guys see that? Um, real quick here. I just want to show you something. Um, Leonard asked, John, is a 30 tick used when trading sniper? Well, we don't actually trade off the 30 tick itself. Okay. But even in sniper, yeah, I do like to, to watch the 30 tick. I like to know what's coming up. I like to know where the big levels are. Okay. Um, because it also helps me get ready for a sniper trade. Look, look at this, for example. This is like on the 27th and 28th last week. Okay. Can you kind of see, I want you to look back in here in this area okay Fo follow me here for a minute it's kind of hidden here but there's a cluster right there can you kind of see that cluster there's a mini magnet right here mini magnet right here okay and you can very faintly see this this is zoi right here okay i know that's hard to see you see that you know lori and especially Lori, talks about looking left, okay? Well, you're way over here, but look, and do you see all that right in here? Now let's move straight to the right. What do you have literally all of the same areas? What do you have right here? And then again right here, and then again right here. Okay, you see that? Do you see all those? And a mini magnet right here and blue ice right here like you see that right because you you see this stack happening right here making a stack and also and then look to the left what's right here a cluster right on that same level and then over here all these things on the same level you see, do you do you guys see that like you see it right here and you can follow it directly back to the left and see there's there's something going on there what if I drew a box around this? Okay. And I extended that box all the way over into the future. Because this happened right now. Into the future, what happens when it comes back to that? Boom and pop. What about the next day at 3.30 in the morning? Boom and pop. What about later at about 7 a.m.? Boom and pop that exact area right there. Do you see that? And so do you see how, when you see all this, when you see this all clustering up here and literally a cluster, and you can look left and see all that, draw it out into the future, guys. Draw it into the future. And if you had this just a few days ago, draw it out into the future, what could you have seen? Bam, right, right, hit and bounce. Bam, hit and bounce. Bam, hit and bounce. So let's just say on each of those examples, you're short in simplicity right here. Or you're short in simplicity right here. Or you're short in simplicity right here. What would that have saved you just getting the hell out? With good reason. Like, do, do you guys see that? It's a target for one. Like, hey, that's where I think it's going to go. Like, yeah, you see it in advance. and Because you drew it into the future. You guys understand what I mean, right? Drawing it into the future here. Like, if, if you're live watching this, you're like, oh, man, that was a lot of stuff there. And let me look. Like, oh, I'm going to draw this level out into the future. What, what do I mean by that? Well, look, I mean, here's a live chart right here okay this is this is why I am but I don't have order prints on this chart right now but let's say that I saw a, a, a level like that I just go right here you see this little thing right here this rectangle I grab that for the day and I just draw it out into the future I can go forward into the future and just draw it out like for my own little self to be like I want that to stand out I want to keep an eye on this level as the day goes on. Because if I see it getting back to there, I want to be aware of that. 
I want to tighten up or I want to target that. And I might have on my charts two or three of those drawn out for the day. So does that make sense? Like I would have literally drawn a rectangle all the way over into the future and I would have seen it bounce boom once, boom twice, boom three. And I'd have been glad it was there. Okay. Do you guys see why? Does that, does that make sense? Right? You know, or I can tell you this. Looking at the top, I would have probably seen, all right, I got too many magnets stacked on top of each other here. I've got green ice stacked there. You know, I've got a cluster right here. I'd have probably drawn this out into the future, and what did it do? Right to it. And I'd have definitely had this drawn to it. Right? Like kind of your end zones. Like this is how I start my trading day is looking at these bigger charts and looking at the last two days, looking left, finding areas like that to draw out. And that's kind of my end zones for the day. And my, not just the two end zones, I might have several of these drawn out. Okay. I like to look at least the last two days. Todd, okay. Now, if the market's like in an area it hadn't been at in a while, I might have to go back. But I like to at least see the last couple of days myself. But do you see and just, and guys, I'm not going back to like last November to try to find crap to show you on a webinar. Like, you know, one was yesterday, one was the day before, this is the 28th. Like, I'm showing you the last few days. You know what I mean? And we've seen multiple examples here of, oh, wow, right to it, right to it, right to it gotcha okay I'm trying to let, let you see that you could literally do this let's let's look at another screenshot here um, let's see here so this here was today okay this was today this was right before the webinar so right now the markets way up at this new high right it's at an all-time high in Q right so we don't have stuff back here do we Okay. Yes, this is one of the places where she does. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see here. Charles, I see your question. Give me just a minute and I'll, uh, I'll try to answer that here for you. Okay. So NQ right now is up at a big all-time high, right? So we don't have a lot of OP back here to do much with, do we? Or levels. But what do we expect will happen at some point? It's going to come back down. Right? So just looking at my 30 tick today, you see right before the webinar here, I drew it out just to give you some examples, okay? As this market starts coming back down, as it's coming back down, I probably should have draw one, drew something in here, right? I don't know that these, you know, like these aren't right stacked on top of each other, but if it's coming down, 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 I'm probably going to expect some kind of hesitancy or something right in here. Don't you guys see that? You see all that? But where am I definitely wanting to draw my first hay? If I'm going short, don't leave my big stuff. Look right here. What do we have here? We've got green ice. We've got these big old blocks. Do you see it right here on top of each other right there? Do you see these two green? Now what do you do? Look left. What's immediately to the left? Just a big old stack of blocks, ZOIs, right on a cluster. Like You see that, right? This is not complicated. You've got green ice and a green block. I look left. What do I have? A stack of crap right there, right? See it? Right underneath it, I've got a cluster. Right underneath it, i got some of this. If I look a little further left and just a little down, I have a, you know, a pivot point. Is, is that not just kind of clear that, hey, be careful. That's the top of a big old chop box too, isn't it? Do you see why I'd want to draw that out into the future for the day at least or a couple days? Where's my next one? Well, not only is it at the bottom of that range, but look at all this crap here, right? I mean, we've got mini magnets and we've got, I mean, 
stack after stack after stack after stack look left well mini magnet look left zoi at the literal same place as the mini magnet that's clearly something there right what about down here look left anything stand out to you right here that kind of became a bouncing point and then a support point right here and right here and in here and then a chop point in here look like you see it might even can see something here too but look here left we got a plus two five dev there we've got two clusters right there two big eye blocks right there another eye block right there another one here another one here mini magnet here. you see all that right there left ZOIs packed in there that's worth drawing out to the left okay uh, I think I still have it set at 50 James on the on the blocks I believe on the 30 tick let me just check and see if that's what I have I'm not sure what the uh, if you use the templates in the toolkit Lori's got that already all customized in there. You wouldn't have to change anything. Um, I believe mine are set at 50. Let's see here. Marin, do you know what that is? Yeah, I've got it at 50 still. So, so guys, do you, do you see this? For some of you, this is very basic. and Y'all been doing this for years. But I know for others, like, I always start my day this way looking at some of these bigger you know daryl talks to you about hey start your day look at your charts on your 10 minute dynamic magnet charts take those magnets and click them and put them over on your other charts on your 60 and 240 chart where are your flux levels pop them over right you already do that routine in the morning don't you right do this routine too all you got to do is just look and and if you're having to struggle to look and it's like, oh, well, I don't know. There's some uh... guys. Come on. Find the ones that stand out. And again, I didn't go to some random old day last year on a Tuesday to find something for the webinar. This is today. I mean, come on. This is today. Do You see it? Do you kind of see why you would have marked these two? Like, OK, cool. Market's way up here. If it comes back into this range. And I'm in a simplicity trade about to hit one of these levels. Am I going to leave my stop way back up at the solid line of simplicity and give back 30 or 40 ticks? Like I said, I didn't have a long, big training <laughs> ready for you guys because I didn't know I was doing the webinar. But this is something that's been on my mind the last few days. Of I'll, I'll see somebody. I'll have these levels marked on my own chart. And I see somebody in a trade going into one going, oh, man, I gave up 40 ticks. And I'm like, why? What, why? Do, do you get it now? Like some of you may not have understood what I was trying to say in the beginning of this. But this is what I'm talking about. Of Why did you give it back? Well, I might. I was hoping that I could hold on to it and it would keep going a little. Come on, man. It's right in front of you. This isn't something I had to make up or mark up. You can, you guys can pull this up yourself, and and you, you see it. When it stands out and slaps you in the face, mark it and mark it into the future. Like you. you that will be one of the most helpful things you do to be able to look at your big chart throughout the day and say, oh, it's coming back down to that big thing I marked. Right? Here's another quick example of the Dow. Here's YM. And this is uh, today. Okay. Um, as it's coming down, 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 down. Right? You can see it hitting a few things on the way down. You might want to tighten up. It finally stops right here. Okay. 
where this 0.7 dev was and this I block was. And then what does it leave again right there? Another block and a cluster, right? So I'm gonna start wanting to pay attention to that now, that there's three of them there, especially when there's blocks stacked, right? Make sense? Okay, now on the way down, we've already had this red ice here, right around settlement. I got a mini magnet and a uh, paw right there. Boom, it leaves another paw and mini magnet right there. Boom, and another paw right there. You see all that? This was this morning. You see that, guys? Everybody see it? So when it comes and bounces up here, and you're following it up, what are you gonna do? Well, John, it went a little further. Shut up. <laughs> it went further and it pulled back. You let it go away against you. Get out. Don't talk to me about that little that extra bar. Do you see that? If you were trading that, just get out right there and take your money and don't let your heart give you a heart attack. Do you, does that make sense? Don't be greedy, right? And then what happens if you're going to take it back down? You've already got a triple stack of stuff here. Where does it go? Eh, pushes right through it, rejects it, boom. And you might not have got out till up here somewhere with your stop, where you could have got out right there and just been happy. You see it? Again, examples from today. Now, I'll also tell you this. If any of you are in, well, if you're in YM now, you probably should have been, be out of it. But, um... Taking YM up, what do you see up here? You see that? YM right, do you see, do you guys see this up here? At about 28, 7, 80 in there. Let me show you here, I don't have order prints on this YM chart here, but look, I drew it out up top here. Hold on. See it right here? That's what I'm talking about. See, I drew it out on this chart. YM was coming up, pulled back, coming up, pulled back. If it starts to head back up and you're in this trade, getting into this area right here, would that be a pretty good area to, uh, use tonight's lesson shoot for all I know it'll blow through and you'll be like that, that John don't know nothing right <laughs> but if you're in that trade going up isn't that a smart place where you move that stop up because you can clearly see that from this other chart here that yeah that's uh -uh. I'm expecting a pullback there I'm gonna, I'm gonna tighten up and keep that money okay all right guys so again that was kind of last minute kind of thrown together there something i wanted to share with you but i i challenge you go back to the start of each day over the last like two weeks here okay and you know you might have to run a quick replay on a 30 tick or whatever but go back to the start of each day and draw out those large levels draw out those walls into the future okay and then look throughout that day and look at some of the trades you took and find out how many of those trades, especially those simplicity trades that you're trying to trail, how that would have worked out differently for you of, oh man, that simplicity trade that I let come back against me 30 or 40 ticks. If I'd have drawn this out, I'd have that money in my pocket. That makes sense? Okay do that and try that out uh, and you know compare your trades to those and start doing this every morning it doesn't take but a quick minute just to draw those out and have that kind of there for you to look at and you know make sure this weekend I'm gonna get those specials pushed out make sure to take advantage of the Labor Day specials and again maybe this is a great time this three-day weekend and do a little homework do a little back testing and check out some of these things on these larger charts okay 
Um, there was a couple questions here. All right, Charles said, can you explain a bit more about let me run in the background for OP data to plot, please? I'm still confused about shutting down computers, staying connected, etc. On some videos, DM says to shut down and clear cache. And other okay, so Charles, right now, for example, I opened this chart up just a little while ago. Um, I do have order prints on this chart, okay? And when you have a chart open, okay, order prints will plot on the chart while the chart is open, okay? If you close your computer down, it will not keep plotting order prints while your chart is closed, while the, while the chart's not open. Okay, does that make sense? Now, so if I'm trading and I get up at nine o'clock and I'm trading, okay, and I'm trading nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. So at 11 o'clock, I'm done trading and I close my computer. Well, the next day when I open my chart, I'll see order prints on my chart the day before from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. But I won't see any after that because my because it was closed. All right. You, you with me on that so far? Charles? Now, if I just let my charts run 24 seven, I'll always have order prints plotting. But a lot of data can build up in the background and, and slow down NinjaTrader. So sure, it's okay. I can go in and okay, I'm gonna shut all my charts down and I'm gonna shut down NinjaTrader. That, that way it's shut down. I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna clear my cache so everything's cleared out. I might even restart my computer then I'll reopen my charts and let them run again. So I may be down for 15 minutes. So therefore I won't have order prints on my chart for those 15 minutes that I was down. Does that make sense? So yes, it's okay to shut everything down once a day to clear it all out, to clear the cache out, reset everything, kind of a, you know, hey, TV's messing up, turn it off, turn it on. Does that make sense? Um, but then you want to just leave it run because that way the order prints will only plot while the chart's on. So it's okay if you miss 10 or 15 minutes of the day because you want to have your computer and Ninja cleared and ready to go and fast. Okay. So is that clarified for you, Charles? What the difference is there? It's okay to shut it down and clear it out, but pop it back on. Okay. So some people are saying, hey, what's the best time um, to do that? Well, as most of you know, the market, you know, the market's closed from five to six Eastern time anyway. So that's a great time to shut down your computer or shut down NinjaTrader, clear your cache. You know, if you want to restart your computer as well during that time, have it back up and going before six o'clock when the market reopens. You actually don't miss any data that way. Now, I know not all of you are available at the computer at that time or whatever, but that's a great time to do it. Okay? That way you're not missing any data there. Okay? Um, David says, can you have just one 30 tick chart open and switch between instruments and still have order prints on all of them? No, you cannot. It'll only print on that instrument. David okay but I mean you can have them in the background you can have them you know it's not something you have to have up in front of you all day necessarily you could mark you know the big areas you want to mark and, and move those marks over to your trading chart or over to your 10 minute chart or two four you don't have to have that have it up does that make sense so well guys uh, I apologize I 
I know you are expecting Daryl tonight, but I hope you understand why he wasn't able to make it. I know you're expecting a little bit different type of walkthrough of simplicity, the one that Daryl normally does with you starting in the morning and going trade by trade. We didn't do that tonight. Um, like I said, it was kind of last minute for me, but I wanted to share this with you. I hope this was helpful. Wasn't what you were expecting, but I hope it, it helped remind you to not just stay focused, zoomed in on your 30 second simplicity chart. I'm proud of you guys for following the rules, but step outside of it and see what the market is telling you with these big old levels <laughs> and these big old stacks on these bigger charts. Move that stop up and keep some of your money. Okay, like keep some of your money. Don't be greedy. You see it in front of you, move your stop up. And it's not hard. This is not some big thing riding on. Just pop the chart up and look and see it. Let it run. Get some order prints on it. And like I said, it, it, it'll let it slap you in the face. Okay? All right, guys. Keep an eye out. Thursday, I'll be blasting out to you the Labor Day specials. Thank you so much for your time tonight and for your interaction. I sure appreciate it. And we will see you guys in the morning in the trade room. Thanks again for everything and for all your interaction. Have a great one, guys. Alrighty, bye-bye.